looks nice and professional, doesn't it? Look at that. And we can cut the wire to any length we want when we do it ourselves. Okay, so if you're going to be crimping your own wiring, you haven't bought a kit or anything like that, I'm going to show you how to do that. I do recommend doing this because then you can cut the cable to the exact length you want. You don't have unnecessary cable running around and it's a lot better. But you do need a couple of tools here. You either need a crimping tool like this one here or just some pliers or a vise or something like that. You don't really need the specialist equipment. You need the terminals here. I have ring terminals. Obviously, you need a wire here. I have a meter of black a meter of red uh, some vacuum hosing to do a nice good job and a little bit of dielectric grease as well to prevent oxidation so like always I'll link all the parts and everything in the description below so you can purchase them and do this yourself when getting the terminals make sure it's the same size as the conductor inside there if you buy the wire at that size and the terminals at that size you're going to have no problem at all the first thing we want to do is sort of measure the end of the terminal here so that's how much wire goes into there and we're going to cut that much insulation off the wire so about that much there okay so i've marked the insulation all the way around there we're just going to get like a little knife right here and just cut all the way around it Okay, so once we've cut all the way around it there, we can pretty much just pop this off with a little bit of force right there. Okay, the next thing, pop the terminal on right there. Nice solid fit, look at that. Okay, so if you've never used one of these before, it's pretty much just a glorified version of something like this, but it works with thicker wire. This one only goes up to, it looks like AWG 10 there. So this one, actually goes all the way up to AWG 0 or 1-0 but because this is in metric it goes to around 50 millimeters squared okay so it's quite simple to use it feels kind of like using bolt cutters or something like this on here when it's open you can actually adjust the gauge of wire you want to crimp right there so you can see it's on 50 millimeters squared now on the back here we have these two kind of springs that go in and when you push those in it lets you rotate this wheel right here so you can see all the different gauges there and because this is 50 millimeters squared roughly so zero gauge is around 53 millimeters. I think it's gonna work fine just for crimping purposes. Okay, so with both 50s lined up here, when we actually close this, you can see the hole will have that gauge right there. And that's what we're gonna be using to crimp our terminal connector right here. So make sure the ring terminal is nice and snug right there. So you can see there's pretty much no exposed copper there. Get our tool around here, this sort of position, and just squeeze it together. And then the terminal is crimped. Okay, and there's the result. It's crimped evenly from all sides there. I crimped it here and crimped it there as well for extra safety. It's not going anywhere. It's pretty solid in there. So that's something is quite hard to do with pliers or a vise because it crimps from all angles. But it is still achievable if you don't have a special tool like this one here. Okay, the next thing to do is put some heat shrink tubing on. This is going to protect our connection from any dirt, debris, anything like that. It's going to put a nice protective layer over our join right here. Now, if your other end already has a terminal on, then you might want to feed this on before crimping this on. Otherwise, you're going to be in a bit of a sticky situation. So when calculating your heat shrink tubing, make sure it is bigger than the gauge of the wire, but also the insulation. The gauge is just for the the copper conductive part in there it doesn't account for the insulation and this can change from brand to brand so just get some digital measuring calipers or anything like that and work out how wide it all is so it looks like 13.3 millimeters so maybe a 15 millimeter sleeve will be sufficient for us so if we look at this little box here we have 15 millimeter sleeving right here so this one is going to be the one we're going to use Okay, right, so let's just thread that on. It's very easy to forget to do this, and you've already put the terminals on, and you forget about the heat shrink tubing, so I'm just giving you that warning now. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Okay, so that's starting to look very professional already, but before we slot that on, we're going to protect this connection 
with some dielectric grease. Now, if you want to learn all about dielectric grease, I have a dedicated video on this stuff and its uses in cars and trucks. I'll link it in the description below. You can check it out. But this essentially is going to prevent oxidation. But before applying dielectric grease, make sure you have a solid connection first. Once the connection has been made, then add the dielectric grease. You don't want to add this and then crimp this down. It is the wrong way to do this because this is an insulator. Okay, so I'm going to put a little dielectric grease around here. We just want to cover pretty much everything which is going to be underneath the heat shrink tubing. And that's going to be fine. We don't really need much more than that. So now we're going to slide over our heat shrink tubing over our connection here. Looks pretty good. And then get a heat gun or a hair dryer or something like this to shrink it down. Okay, so we're going to put our heat shrink tubing up here. We're going to push it right up there because it's going to shrink that way, this way, and also this way. So we want to make sure all our connections are going to be sealed when it's heat shrunk down. So just grab a hair dryer. I've got a little heat gun here. They're very cheap to buy. Put it on a low setting. There's one and two. I think number one will be fine. And we're just going to shrink this down. If any excess dielectric grease comes spilling out, just wipe it up with a towel. This attracts dirt and debris, so we want to make sure it's not exposed on the outside. But that's pretty much it. How to apply a loop terminal to a bit of wire here. Looks nice and professional, doesn't it? Look at that. And we can cut the wire to any length we want when we do it ourselves.